Today, I'm in the capital of California. My guest is Dennis Gingrich. Dennis is the sales and finance director for the Nilo Company, a family auto group based out of Sacramento. He's a husband, a father of five, originally from Gardnerville, Nevada, and has lived in the greater Sacramento area for about eight years. Dennis started in the auto industry working for his dad during college. He was part of a traveling car sales circus, no kidding, more on that later. And he's worked for a 26 year career through automotive to an important role at the Nilo Company. And today, we're gonna take a ride in a 2023 Land Rover Defender 110, grab a cup of Joe, and see what turns his gears. Dennis, what you doing, my dude? Yo, Peter, what's going on, man? We're going on in about 20 minutes or what? so. What? What? Where? Never mind. Hey, if you got a second from crunching numbers, I want to see if I could meet you at the dealership and then get a little pop. I think I can make that happen. See you soon, buddy. I'm Peter Duffy, and this is Dealers in Cars Getting Coffee. This is the 2023 Land Rover Defender 110X. The 110X comes with a 3.0 inline six cylinder engine with a mild hybrid system, whatever that means. That makes 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Not too shabby for a medium sized British SUV. It has those funny windows so you can see the monkeys in the trees. It has determined eyes. It has 22 inch wheels that look like a fresh pair of Nikes. It's rugged, it's capable. It can wade through Amazon rivers in a single bound. The one I'm driving today for our show is similar to the two tone colors of legacy defenders that you used to see in that milky blue and white tones that bumbled over some African safari. Except that this color is called Gondwana Stone, which is this hue of gold paired with a two-tone gloss black. And if I'm honest, it sounds like Land Rover Gondwana make up some new names for their colors. If they don't crack it, I'll, I'll, they're my best, this is my best stuff. I feel like there's something about Land Rovers that says, I want to spend a ton on an SUV, and I could drive it off-road if I wanted, but more than likely, I won't. So perhaps I'll take it for some tea and crumpets instead. Hey Dennis, hey, how are you, man? Great, Peter. What's good to going see on, you, buddy. Absolutely, good, good to see, to you, see man. you, man. I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit more about the history of Nilo. Yeah, for sure. I love to tell this story. You know, the Nilo company, or really the Nilo family, got started in 1921. They okay. were a Packard Pierce Aero dealership in San Francisco. I think it's 102 years the family's been in business. They migrated up here to Sacramento in the 50s. The the, the grandfather who recently passed two years ago, a great man. Okay. And uh, they, he was the original. The original 1921 guy? No, no, no. That okay. was the grandfather, oh, no, right? Like, yeah, the like, grandfather, and then uh, you know the the son Richard Nilo, which okay. is you know our current owner, but his dad, right? Okay. Uh, they opened a dealer a dealership with Wes Lasher, a Volkswagen dealership, in 1955. Okay. And then from there, that was kind of the start of the the modern evolution or footprint, if you will, of the the modern day Nilo company. Obviously, we're in our you know our newest dealership. You know, this not, place is beautiful. It is beautiful. We just finished a remodel. I on can this. tell. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. And then we're about ready to open another Porsche dealership. Wow. Uh, which that should be online here the first quarter of 2024. That's kind of a bold move in these times. Yeah. Well, but Porsche is a good brand, well, and 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 it's like. <laughs> Arguably the most gross from Porsches, it, right? It doesn't like, suck to be a Porsche it's dealership. It's insane the markup over the MSRP stuff that's, that they have. It, yeah, it's amazing. It's an exclusive brand. They got a yep. really, uh, you know, a loyal following, if you will. Even the newer, more sought after GT3s and GT3 RSs. When you get a new one in, like you have to, you have to have a relationship, kind of. To get yeah, that. some of those models, you know, when you get into some of the super limited stuff, like you bought a 918 Spider. Yeah. When those came out, you know, they gave you first crack at some of their future models. I think over a 10-year sure. period. Sure, 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 sure. So, and, and they're, you know, they're amazing automobiles. So fast forward to today. Who is is running from the Nilo family? Who's really running the show? So the, we're, we're currently on with the three brothers. You have uh, Rick, Roger, and David. Okay. Uh, Rick Nilo is our, our president. He's okay. in the office every day. I always tell everybody we work for good kings. They're just great human beings, yeah. and uh, it's a joy to be here. That's good. Nilo, the name. Yeah. First, I'm from the East Coast, so like where I come from, it's Nilo. Mm -hmm. Are they Italian? 
Uh, I believe so. I, I, and you know, how, how is that not Nielo? I don't know, man. I don't know how it turned from <laughs> Nielo to uh, I know, Nielo. But, but, People have this preconceived notion or these salty ideas about dealerships, right? Oh, those guys or whatever. What do you say to those people that are gabbing out there about the actual dealer life? I mean, pick your pick whatever vertical you want to talk about, sure. and you know you've got your stereotypical individual that really puts a black eye or a blemish on the industry. And I think where the industry gets lost or really just sales in general, I just don't think they keep the, the human at the center of what they're doing. It's like a loaded question in many ways, but you feel like Nilo does a great job of that. Honestly, not only the Nilo company, I would say the majority of your dealerships strive to put the, you know, put the customer at the center of it. Cause I mean, selling a car, it, it it's not hard. Cars cost what they cost. And you know, if I can find an individual, a car that checks boxes A, B, C, and D, and it can be affordable, yes. and I treat them with integrity, respect, and just give them the truth so they can make a decision, I think that's what doesn't happen when you read all the negative stories. I think the other thing that I often say to, especially because you know my friends will be like, ah, this dealership and this dealership didn't do me well or whatever. I kind of bring it back to like, listen, like this is a, a business, right? So if you bought a car for me and I traded it in, you're naturally gonna give me less than that car is actually worth because, well, one, you gotta turn the lights on, <laughs> two, you gotta pay everybody. I mean, this beautiful dealership and things don't come for free. It is an actual business and you want to try to remain profitable. Um, and I think without going too far down the rabbit hole, I think profits in that sort of mindset that might be out there that we're profitable companies and companies working for profit is this bad thing. Realistically, profits keep people employed. Profits keep the business in business. Profits keep the business in business for the community. All these people live around here, right? They have houses, they have homes. So, you know, the economic engine that dealerships are, really, I think they get a bad rap sometimes. On yeah, that. well, know? they absolutely do. And I mean, the amount of sales tax revenue that's generated out of the deal. I mean, it, it, I mean, there's so many different things. You know, the city obviously uses that money for, you know, all the things we use, fix roads, and I'm sure you get in, like, they use it for stuff that they shouldn't use it on, but, you know, whatever. Welcome right. to modern day society. Yeah, America. But, you know, it is, exactly. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, the, the, the local automobile dealership is plays a big role in, in their community. So you are, the sales and finance director for the Nilo company. What is your favorite part about that role here at Nilo? You know, on a selfish front, uh, I would say I just really am appreciative for all the latitude the Nilo family allows me. So I appreciate the trust and respect. And then really just to be able to, you know, I've learned more in this past three and a half years uh, than I think I really have at any point in my career. How old are those three brothers compared to you? Because you said you were 44, right? I'm 44, yep. This is gonna be recorded, so don't use this against yeah, me, yeah, guys. Yeah. I think they're all in their 50s. <laughs> so I would say that they're probably great mentors then. Oh, 100, I mean, they've, you know, they've seen it all, they've done it all, and, uh, you know, they like to collaborate, and it just feels like such a casual environment. Not that we're not, you know, getting down to business and taking care sure. of stuff, but it's just such a relaxed, natural conversation. They enjoy talking about ways to make the the business better. And um, I would say we're very, you know, thoughtful. We're, we don't really move fast. We go at the pace of right, is what I would say, which I appreciate. Go at the pace of right. Yeah. I might use that. Yeah, I, I think it works for us. You always have to be looking outside your immediate circle sure. for, for influence, knowledge, or whatever, because, you know, what's that old saying? We're the average of the five closest people in our lives. We talk to our employees here, you know, when they come on board, you know, hey, maybe, maybe you're just here because you ended up in the automotive industry. Like nobody grows up saying, hey, I want to be in the car business when I grow up. It just doesn't, doesn't happen. You end up here. So whether it be me talking to a young porter about their future and what they want to do, but you, you, you got to invest in other people because, you know, truly, the, you know, when you invest in somebody else early in their career, I mean, the better we all do, you know, the, the happy we, happier we are. Yeah, there's paychecks on the line, but I think the, the real payout is 
find an individual fulfillment professionally because it really does bleed over to your personal life. You wanna do epic cool shit in your personal life, chances are you're gonna to need to do okay on the professional front, yeah. That's a, that's a good point to make. I, I would argue 50% safely of the people I met in your position, in a senior position at some sort of dealership, they started out like washing cars, man. Well, and I think that coincides with just, you know, the automobile represents America to a large extent, right? The American dream is alive and well in the automobile dealerships, you know? Like you started out picturing cars, you know? Yeah. I remember sweeping up cigarette butts on a, a car dealership lot growing up. You know, Look that, at us now. That, I know, right? <laughs> We're doing big things. You wanna hop in a car and get some coffee? Sounds great, man. No, What's your favorite car of all time? Like, if you had to pick one. If I had to pick one, well, I, I like my, I have a 63 Impala Supersport, which wow. I think is cool. I'm really infatuated with the, you know, the 70s big BMW coupes. I think they're CSLs. I think those are cool. Super I, dope. I would love a Porsche 911 Targa. Yes. That's what I would really like. Um, Here? Newer? No, a new, I would love to get a Brand new, new one. one. I'd love to do the European delivery. I just, uh, apparently I have to be like financially responsible because I have kids. Still live in the house, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's what I've been told. We, I think we can get into Elon after it. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan, whether people like him or not. I, I don't really care. You know, I'm sure he could be a, prick, but at the end of the day, like, you can argue a single person, with the help obviously of the companies and the people in them, has done more for humanity than. More than me, I that's know, for sure. For sure yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just taking pictures of cars over here. I'm not. I'm not that important. <laughs> but um, I'm important to someone. But man, he just thinks such in a, in a, in a bigger way. I like to hear him uh, stutter and jabber around because it just you can see his gears moving. You know what I mean? Oh, he's like working up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, like calculations happening. Yeah. Man, it didn't go through. I'll tell you another good one that's out right now is uh, Schwarzenegger's um, Be Useful. That's his new book. And he says in, the, in there that generally speaking, the world isn't going to sh but it, it really is full with good people, right? Like, yeah. um, and we have the ability to change it, which is great. Um, and it starts with us, I think. Yep, no, 100% spot on. I mean, we bring about kind of what we think about and talk about. And I think there's so much focus on negativity in the world. And, uh, you know, that's what that, that's that's the direction that, uh, you know, people, a lot of people think we're going. But there's no shortage of, uh, what did they say? I don't know who said it. There's no, no shortage of uh, resources. There's a shortage of resourcefulness. I've been to Arnold's house two times, and uh, that was for being a photographer. It was for his after-school all-stars. It's like a charity he has. You go there to Arnold's house, you pay 10,000 bucks, you go to uh, you know play poker, take pictures with him, all this stuff. And I'm just a photographer taking pictures of the event, right? So I think I got paid like 500 bucks or something. But um, it was really cool. So he likes to have animals, like, wild animals. So there's like a giant porcupine, a monkey, uh, there's an elephant. I'm not kidding, like a full-on elephant in Bel Air where he lives, right? Mm -hmm. So this elephant drops a deuce the size of a coffee table on his lawn. Oh my god. <laughs> and he goes, that's a big sh yeah. You know what I mean? So you have this 26 year journey. This is the hardest part. Oh, dude. Hardest in terms of just kind of crazy times, I would say, in hindsight, having a kid really young was tough, but um, just because, you know, you're, you're in your 20s, you're a dude, all your buddies are out having fun, and then, you know, starting to, you know, have to be a responsible adult. Like, that was, that has its challenges, but, you know, I would say just overall tough times, you know, going into and out of the 08 crash. That was really, mm. it was tough. And I don't, I don't know. And you're in your 20, late 20s at that point. Yeah, I'm in my late 20s. You know, I still got young kids. Uh, you know, I suffered from poor decision making, you know, like a lot of us guys do. And, uh, you know, out having fun and, you know, but the market's changing. Things were getting tough. I, you know, it always done well. 
Thank you. But all of a sudden, sales started drying up and you'd see all these guys that you work with that were like, man, these are good guys that ran local, you know, local dealerships, managers, whatever. And, right. You know, you started seeing guys like losing their job but around that same time I was going through a divorce and, you know, and I went from here to here, you know, I had alimony, child support. Alimony in your 20s? Oh, it was great, man, loved it. What a so good time. Much, oh, so great. Did but you I, even have a paycheck left when that was done? No, I, I didn't, you know, and I, <laughs> not, not really, you know, but I still had to Did go out Did you like live with your parents back or no, something? No, I mean, I just found a, you know, found a way. Just hustle. Know, just hustle, man, just work harder, work longer. The earlier part of my childhood, my dad moved us from like near Boston, so 10, 14 miles out of Boston. There's nothing but potatoes, right? Because it had main potatoes. Yeah. So as a kid, I worked on a farm, which can segue us into um, where we are today, right? So I have this vineyard and uh, apple orchard at my house, and you buy this farm. Mm -hmm. And what, what were you thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? I don't know what we were thinking. So we found this place out in rural Lincoln, you know, 10 acres, house, needed some work, and we just went out there and bought this place. No. And this is pre-Nilo, pre but you're working in this area. In the, yeah, in the automotive industry, okay. yep. So we bought it really in just kind of blank slate and started doing stuff. So you might be crazier than me. I, 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 <laughs> I think so too. I really feel like I bought another full-time job. No, I, I did for sure. Yeah. Like, no one was stupid enough to take that house I bought. Yeah, no. My wife was like, are you sure? I was like, it's easy, we got it. And then you know pretty quickly it's not easy. No, it's not. I mean, that's real work. I mean, you you know, I mean, obviously. Did I you have help or are you literally waking up? You're looking at the help. You don't have the farm anymore, right? No. no. I, I, got, I got rid of that job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What was the what was the moment where you're like, yeah, I think I'm done with this. The you know the kids were starting to get to an age where they were, were participating in sports, mm -hmm. and like to go to the grocery store 30 minutes into town, 30 minutes. I know. Like, yeah. There, we all are faced with the same problem, and that's 24 hours in any given day. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just gotta you gotta pick what you're gonna do. Yeah. You know, you can only do so much. I know I won't live there forever. I know my wife would love to move back to Southern California and we have family there and great friends, so who knows? Yeah. Well, that's just different seasons in life, right? You know, what? what's good now might not be good in five years. At that time, people were like, what the hell are you doing here? I'm just like, we're just trying on a different pair of pants yeah. for a second, yeah. like just to see how it goes. Figuring some shit out. What is the worst that can happen? Yeah, exactly. Did you die? No, exactly. no, no, you didn't. But would you trade that experience for anything? No, never. absolutely not. What is your advice to future and current automotive professionals? I think that the key is, is whether you, you're planning on making a career out of automotive or you're not, the, the people skills, the communication skills that you're gonna develop in this industry, right. like latch onto that. Like, because those are just fundamentals to any successful human being. They're all good communicators. Mm -hmm. We all have the same 24 hours. We've been talking about it. It's what you do in those hours. And while you're here, focus on being the best porter you can be or the best technician or the best salesperson and really grow because if you truly don't want to be in automotive for the rest of your life I'm happy for you you have a journey or a vision someplace you want to go right. but while you're here build a great body of work so when you get to your dream job yes that you have something to speak to and that if you want to say hey I want to go work for Peter Peter's going to pick up the phone and say, hey, how's so-and-so? And whoever you're, is close in your work sphere says, man, that gal, she was so awesome. She would go above and beyond on every little thing. Customers loved her. She was a joy to work with. We hate to see her go, but we're also glad to see her reach her ultimate destination. Being the leader that I, I, I want to be, I always say, uh, you know, put in your 110%, no doubt about it. but. I'm asking you for 100% because I'm paying you for it. So you should do that regardless. Yeah. But the other 10% is not for me, it's yeah. for you. Yeah. It's for your investment in your future. And I try to at least tell my kids that too, you know, and 
and when they have something at home or something and they you know do the dishes but don't clean up the rest of it. I say no baby you got to clean up the whole thing leave it sparkling because not only are you going to feel better but it's like building karma and character and integrity that you do things above and beyond whenever you do them and when you have that and it's built into your mindset and it becomes normal for you to do that the world is your oyster right like you can do anything you want Last kind of final question. What is the most bizarre story you have from traveling in sales? That's not, you know, that that's we can, like that we can say like out loud. PG ish? Yeah. 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 yeah PG 13. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is an interesting story. There was a uh, customer, and I walk up to this gentleman, and he's wearing these shorts, and like his entire manhood is sitting out on the on the chair and I'm going like I just was like hey dude uh, hey dude like you need to tell excuse me your <laughs> are doing. you know and I'm just like wow uh, like no just no I like, don't know if he was self-awareness I don't know I'm hoping I, I don't know I don't know what I hope but I was like are you aware or do you care or am I being punked you know the, and this is in the border in yeah, Southern California. Like, yeah down there El Centro California El like, Centro yeah. that's a God's that, country that's an interesting place for yeah, sure for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that, that I only did that for like three four months yeah, I mean, that's long enough to get involved with it, knowing that, eh, hey, this isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. Right? No, it's not, it wasn't a... It, Did you make good, like, good, good money doing I, it, though? Dude, it was, you know, it kind of was a... Uh... Yeah, I, I did good, you know, but it was kind of feast or famine. That Indiana sale we went to, like, literally after expenses, Yeah, I made 10 bucks. But the experience yeah. couldn't trade it if, for nothing. Sure. sure. Yeah, sure. Right, yeah, like, yeah. sure. That's just my excuse as a salesman that didn't have a good sale. <laughs> so that's what I'm going with. That's great. Dude, I appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you, For real, you, man. that was yeah. really, really amazing. Yeah, um, We'll stay in touch, but um, I mean it. I think it would be really cool uh, to come up on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Show you the ranch mm -hmm. and get out there and, and have fun. Yeah, that'd be uh, great.